Well, major worry about Canada's mortgage market is growing. 680's Richard Southern joins us now. And Richard, one of Canada's biggest lenders continues to hemorrhage cash. Yeah, it's home capital group, Francis, and investors not only in Canada, but around the world are watching this situation with home capital develop. Just a quick refresher for those who don't know home capital, Canada's biggest non-bank lender. They give mortgages to people who can't qualify for a mortgage from the big Canadian banks. And this uh, home capital hit with a lot of uncertainty after Ontario regulators said that executives hid mortgage broker fraud from investors. There's been an old-fashioned run on home capital deposits. The company said today... It only has $192 million left in its high interest savings accounts, down from $1.4 billion two weeks ago. It uses this money to fund its mortgage business, and it's been relying on a $2 billion credit line. Uh, Home Capital today naming three new directors to its board and a new chairwoman as it looks to uh, stave off potential bankruptcy. And they're looking for buyers, and it's a scary situation. Francis, many continuing to watch it closely. Well, a uh, major takeover in the luxury brand world. So Coach is looking to acquire Kate Spade. Yeah, looking to pay $2.4 billion for Kate Spade. And Francis, it is really a battle for the millennial dollar. Uh, Coach's CEO said that Kate Spade has a strong awareness among younger consumers, so-called millennials. Uh, Coach executive said that 60% of Kate Spade customers are in that younger age group. They want exposure to that. Earlier this month, the Coach reported its fourth straight quarter of gains. Handbags above the $400 price tag now account for 55% of sales in North America. So, yeah, big money deal. Francis Coach again spending $2.4 billion for Kate Spade. And, Richard, I know you have six Kate Spade handbags. So, uh, uh, I, you know, one for every uh, outfit, absolutely. That's right. <laughs> so it could be a major blockbuster novel with an unusual collaboration. Do tell. This is a very interesting story. So Bill Clinton and James Patterson are teaming up to co-author a thriller together. The former U.S. president and the best-selling novelist are collaborating on a book called The President is Missing. The publishers <laughs> call the book a unique amalgam of intrigue, suspense, and behind-the-scenes global drama from the highest corridors of power. Francis, the publishers say it will be informed by details only a president can know. It's due out next June. It'll be the first work of fiction by Clinton. Patterson, though, has authored 114 New York Times best-selling authors. He tops Forbes' list of highest-paid authors. He has a net worth of $700 million. So an interesting collaboration there, don't you think? Uh, I'm just curious if this is really fiction or not. I mean, yeah. could it be reality TV of what's currently good, happening in Washington? Good point. Could be interesting. We'll have to give that a read next year. Yeah, no kidding. So massive ratings for a new TV channel in Norway. Uh, what's it called? Slow TV? It's called Slow. This is fascinating. Okay, so you know uh -huh. the television business a little bit un upended by the internet lately. People download and streaming stuff. Broadcasters are experimenting with different things. This is called Slow TV. It started with a real-time train journey from Bergen to the capital of Norway called Oslo. The cameras just, you know, watch the scenery go by for seven straight uninterrupted hours. No narration, no plot. Uh, another program was the National Knitting Night. It started with sh the shearing of sheep. The knitters then went to work. And the final product, a sweater, came 13 hours later in the broadcast. Wow. They also, Francis, did a salmon swimming upstream, 18 mm -hmm. straight hours of that. And they did a cruise along the Norway coast, which lasted for five days. They broadcast all 134 hours live. It sounds boring, but would you believe about half of Norway's population tuned in at one point or another? Many said they found it relaxing, hypnotizing. It slowed them down. And it's been a major hit, so who knows? Maybe slow TV's coming to North America soon. I don't know. You know, uh, maybe it's leveraging off the Fireplace Channel. Yes, right? that the was the Rotisserie can Channel. Yes, remember the Rotisserie Channel? I was yes. Uh, Swiss LA. They had the chicken roasting. <laughs> People are mesmerized by this sort of thing, and I totally. guess in this day and age, you sort of just want to relax when you go home, and maybe programs like that do the trick. Yeah, you know, maybe you need a new, uh, maybe you need a coffee, and uh, if you have a phone, maybe you need a case that brews a coffee, and that's actual reality. This is not a joke, okay? This is called the Mo Case. It's a phone cover that dis dispenses espresso whenever you want it. So you slip in an espresso filled cartridge. It's heated up by the case's battery. It then dispenses a 25 milliliter shot of Java. It's all controlled by an app. You hit the button. 
when you need a jolt. Expected to retail for 54 bucks. It's still in the Kickstarter phase. We in the newsroom could use one of those, I'm sure, Francis. Uh, one? I think uh, we need yes. to outfit everybody <laughs> with one of those. That you is a brilliant idea. Yeah, that's a pretty cool one. Phone case for everything now. But it can't, uh, it can't uh, uh, foam milk, I guess, right? So we're only espresso. You're so looking no latte, for, a, you're looking for a very fancy drink, my goodness, Francis. Well, you know, if you have a big if phone, you got to have a big drink, right? <laughs> there's no steam milk. Francis is not interested. Darn. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Thanks. Very entertaining.